Like I said earlier, we've been uh, going through the Gospel of Mark, and it's a, it's a lot of fun, and really, I, I was talking with Jason before he left for Tuscarora, um, and he just got done. He went, he went out there a couple weeks ago, drove out there, preached on, on Sunday at a church, and then had about 12 messages through the week out there at the, at the camp. Um, so I, w- I was bugging him some before he left you know, talking about my messages because he's way better at doing that than, than I am and he's been prepping for like the last five, six months for it. Um, and, and looking at the different parts of Mark and, and last week we talked about Jesus doing his little reverse wet willy and, and healing a man uh, who was deaf and sticking his, Jesus sticking his fingers in his ears, spitting and then sticking his finger on the guy's tongue, um, which is pretty gross. But hey, the guy could uh, hear and speak plainly after that and... Um, you know, told a lot of people about Jesus. So that was a, a cool thing. And then this week, we already had Jesus feed 5,000. Now he's going to feed 4,000. But then next week, um, it's, it's a really cool part. And it kind of, it's like a culmination of things happening in Mark and where a lot of Jesus' miracles and things are leading up to. So that's uh, exciting. But I was, I was bugging him a little bit because it would have been more fun uh, to also preach next week. But I'm sure that he wants to get back and, and preach to you guys too. Plus, uh, it's, still, it's still fun to, to preach on this, and he still will enjoy preaching next week. But um, as we're cruising through, cruising through Mark, uh, we're in Mark 8 today, and yeah, let's get into it. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him, And said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? Sound familiar? Like when you fed the 5,000 and they're like, this is a desolate place. Um, And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said seven, which is two more than they had before. And he directed the crowd to sit on, down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves, and having given, having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people, and they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said that these should also be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away, and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he, Jesus, cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. And a seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? So there's a, there's a few things going on here, and even just a, a couple different layers as we've been uh, looking at Jesus performing miracles again and again and again, healing people. Uh, this is the second time he's fed a, a large crowd of people. Um, he's also, this isn't his first time butting heads with the Pharisees, or the Pharisees trying to test him and getting him to trip up somewhere. Uh, but it's, it's really interesting. Uh, originally, when, when people were reading this feeding of the 4,000, some 
of the original scholars just assumed that it was a misprint and they were just writing the same story again, which is, I mean, they weren't looking too much into context because Jesus talks about it right afterwards. Hey, when I fed the 5,000, how many loaves? When I fed the 4,000, how many loaves? Uh, but it's, it's very similar where there's people out listening as crowds of people gathered to hear Jesus. He spoke with authority and the people respected that and they wanted to follow him and hear what he had to say. And then some were, were there because they wanted to be healed or some were there and had been healed and stuck around to listen to what Jesus was saying. And Jesus was just going place to place when he was trying to take a break. People would show up uh, even like last week, he like goes in a house and the Seraphonician woman finds him there and asks him to heal his daughter. And so he's always got all of these things uh, going on constantly. So there's this crowd that's been with him for three days in a desolate place. And I'm not exactly sure what that would have looked like. I kind of imagine something uh, like a big like music fest. If any of you guys have been to like Sunshine before and there's all like the tent city and then all the stages and people just set up for a few days and bring bring some food, and if like sunshine went on a surprise extra day, um, I think a lot of people wouldn't have enough food prepared for that extra day, and these people also just sitting and, and listening and hanging out with Jesus for three days also ended up without any food, and they're in a desolate place. So Jesus, being Jesus, has compassion on them and, and asks his disciples, hey, let's feed these people so they can, so they can make it home. This time, they don't need to take a little boy's lunch, um, but they, they have seven loaves and a few, a few fish. Um, and Jesus, kind of like before, tells the people to sit down and then just has the disciples set food before them. And just like before, everybody's fed. And just like before, there's baskets filled up afterwards. Um, they're, they're a little bit different baskets, I learned in, in my studying. I'm not Jason, so I don't have like the, all the Greek education, but I can still, I can still learn some of it. Um, and the baskets originally, with the, when he fed the 5,000, he had 12 baskets full, but they were little like picnic baskets, smaller ones. But then when he fed the 4,000, these seven baskets um, were, were big baskets. The same like word for basket ends up being used for when Paul is escaping a city later on in the New Testament and they lower him down a wall in a basket. So this is like human-sized or human-carrying basket, which has got to be a little bit bigger. I couldn't fit in a picnic basket, um, but if one of these baskets Paul could fit in. So both of these times, there's a whole lot of leftover bread that Jesus has. And so it's just the bread thing happens, Jesus feeding people and providing for people. And even as we heard uh, from Paul in, in Scripture earlier, don't worry about what to eat. God, God provides. He provides for the, the fields, and the, and the grass and the flowers he provides for the birds, he will provide for you as well. And then they hop on a boat, as what happens in Mark oftentimes. He, Jesus and his disciples are somewhere, and then they hop in a boat, cross over to another side of the this, this sea, and do some of the same things or a few different things. Uh, but they go, and the Pharisees meet them. And I imagine, I imagine just because... I, I, it's fun to think of it, but like Jesus heads across on the boat and the Pharisees show up and immediately they're like, hey, uh, show us a sign from heaven. And he's just like, why does this generation seek signs? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And I just imagine like that's all of the words he said on that side of the sea. And then he just like hopped back in the boat and left again, like went over there and he's like, Pharisees, no, I'm not giving you a sign. In the boat, guys, in the boat. But uh, there's not, I mean, there's not context for me to prove that what's happening. I'm guessing he was still performing miracles and healing people. And then the Pharisees showed up. And then after talking with them, Jesus left. But when Mark is just saying immediately this and immediately this and immediately this, it's, um, this is how I imagine it, that Jesus just fed up with the Pharisees for the third or fourth time, just, just up and leaves them. But here's the... Here's where it gets interesting because we've, we've looked at the Pharisees and the Pharisees seem to be more concerned with their traditions, uh, with the you know, best way to wash their hands and calling out Jesus' disciples for different things. And um, Jesus warns his disciples about that. Disciples, in verse 14, have forgotten to bring bread on the boat and they only had one loaf with, or forgotten to bring more bread, any of the seven baskets, they only had one loaf with them. And he cautioned them, saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Or Matthew says the yeast. 
And so he's, he's talking about kind of like, hey, be aware of, of what these guys are trying to feed, with these, feed you, what these guys are trying to, to grow in you. Watch out for that. And the disciples miss this. They just, they miss out on this on a, on a couple different levels. First of all, they, Jesus tells them that, and they begin talking about the fact that they don't have any bread. And so they're like missing the idea that when Jesus is like, watch out for these people, and they're just like, oh yeah, we only have one loaf of bread. And, and so they're, this is, ah, man, the disciples, I, they, get, they get a bad rap, and I give one to them because I, I don't think that they do a great job of remembering things all of the time. Have you ever been in a position where somebody's told you something and then you do the wrong thing and then they remind you that you, they told you that, like a good I told you so moment? Um, but if it happens like five, six, seven times, you, you think that you'd start to, to learn, um, except for the, the disciples don't and oftentimes still I don't as well. But Jesus, aware of the fact aware of this, that they were discussing that they had no bread, said to them, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see and ears do you not hear? Do you not remember? Like they, just a little while ago, Jesus fed 4,000 people. He's like, here, take this bread and set it before people. And they're like, wow, this bread goes on forever. Um, so he asks them these questions that he, I feel like he's just like helping them realize how much they're missing by just asking them very simple questions. Hey, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And I feel like they answered like this, 12. And seven for the 4,000? How many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said, do you not yet understand? Because here they are, like Jesus took five loaves and fed 5,000 plus people and took seven loaves and fed 4,000 plus people. And now they're like, we only got one loaf of bread. I guess we're going to starve. And Jesus is just like, what? Uh, have you guys not been paying attention? Do you, are, you, are your hearts hardened? Are you not hearing? Are you not listening? Do you not remember what's been going on here? Like Jesus, Jesus can take care of you. I, there's only 13 of us here, guys. I can, I can make enough bread for all of you. And so they, so they just completely miss it on that level. But the second level there, if, you, if you're looking at the, the same passage in, in Matthew, uh, when, he's, when he's warning them of them, he says, ooh, there we go, in Matthew 12, or 11, or Matthew 16, 11, and 12, how is it you fail to understand that I do did not speak about bread. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So they were missing out on a, on a couple different levels because Jesus is also trying to help them remember, hey, watch out for this, watch out for this false teaching. And so uh, if you're looking back to Isaiah 29, where we where we see that, that the Pharisees were like, were hypocrites. And the original word for hypocrites um, is as actors. It means from underneath a mask. And so they're pretending to be something that, or pre pretending to believe something that they might not actually believe. And so here, in Isaiah 29, 13 and 14, we see a good example of what the, the Pharisees are like and what Jesus quotes at them a couple of chapters ago in Mark. And the Lord said, Because this, people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. And their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people. With wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. And so people that are, are praising God with their lips... Um, but when confronted with God, don't want anything to do with them. It, it, it would just be like, like acting, where you're pretending to be something else, pretending to care about something, pretending to cry over a, a hard scene when really it's, you know, it's, 
It is just acting. And so, just like this says in Isaiah, I will do wonders. And here's Jesus healing people and, and feeding people and doing these miracles. And yet the Pharisees have heard of these things and still like, hey, show us a sign, Jesus. Uh, show us a sign. And they don't get it. And they're trying to undermine them. And the disciples don't get it. And they're just a little bit confused. But when Jesus is talking and, and mentions the yeast and, and the leaven, it's not, it's, it's just bread, right? He's, when the disciples are all concerned about their one loaf of bread, it's just bread. God's not, God's not so stuck in the, the temporary and the physical and the, the right here and right now. He has, his perspective is, is eternal and he's looking towards heaven and eternity, and planning for those sorts of things. And here's where the disciples and their, their denseness, and um, where, when I see them just being dumb, this is where uh, it connects a little bit better with me. Because so, so often, I'm concerned about what's right here and what's right now, and I'm not thinking about the future, and not just if a future here on earth, but a future uh, on the eternity. In a, in a heaven or hell sort of way. I choose to look at, at what's right in front of me, and I, choose, and, and I forget often. Cindy brought it up on, on Thursday. It's, it's really easy for us to forget what God has done for us as we've, you know what, my bank account's really low, and I don't know if this is going to work out, and it, and it works out, and we give thanks to God. And then the same thing sort of thing happens. I'm not sure if it's going to work out. And then it works out, and we give thanks to God. And then yet again, we're, we're up against the same problem, and we still get worried and all concerned about what God will do. He takes, he takes care of us. It's not, it's not just about the bread. It's not just about your bank account. God's thinking way further than that. Hey, watch out for the false teachers. That's way more important for you guys to be looking out for than to be concerned about how much bread you have. I can take care of the bread. And here I am giving you my words as well. And so Jesus, in, in just hopping in a boat and leaving from the Pharisees, he's been teaching some Gentiles, and these Pharisees who think that they understand um, They don't. They don't completely. And we see in, in Romans that it's not, it's not exactly how the Pharisees thought it was supposed to be. The Pharisees were in the, were in the mindset, hey, we're children of Abraham. Abraham, father of our nation, you know, we're part of, we're part of his line, which means we're God's people. We're, we're good to go. And in Romans 4, uh, we'll read 13 and, and on for a little bit. It's this cool, cool part where, where Paul just opens up for us. It's not, it's not just about the, the people that you are, but it's, a, it's about God. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be the be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. It's saying if you, if following the law is what, is what makes you an heir of Christ, then faith doesn't matter. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, like the Jews, the Pharisees of the time, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is father of us all. As is written, I've made you the father of many nations. And here's the spot that the Jews chose to forget or chose to ignore, that Abraham is the father of many nations, father of, of us all as Christians, as a father of, in, in faith, as one who believed in God, had faith in God, and was credited to him as righteousness. And so even though the promise was given to the Jews when Jesus started sharing, yeah, Jews came first and then the Gentiles. And that's, 
And that's us. We're the Gentiles who also get to be under Abraham, the father of many nations, including ours. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. And hope he believed against hope, and he, that he should become the father of many nations, as he had been told. So shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he, was considered, when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. I think that's pretty funny when Paul's writing about that. But Abraham did believe that he would have a, have a son, even when he was 100 years old, when his body was as good as dead. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who is delivered up for our trespass and raised for our justification. The Pharisees had it wrong. It's, it's wrong to go and, and look for, hey, here's the rules that I need to follow. Hey, here's what... Here's what the traditions of, of the church are. We need to make sure that those are followed through perfectly before I worry about trusting what God says in, in his word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think, you know, based on my feelings, my opinions, what's going to be best instead of trusting God's word. And no, Jesus is saying, watch out for that. Hey, I'll take care of, I'll take care of you. I can, I can give you more bread. Watch out, watch out for, for these guys. And it's really cool because really soon after this, um, I think the disciples start to get it and how Jesus uh, treats them and what he starts to teach them about changes. And it's really encouraging to me because and these disciples were walking with Jesus, who's known as a great teacher. And the people at that time and people at this time both look at Jesus and call him a good teacher, a great teacher. And yet here's the people that are walking with him day after day after day who just don't get what he's talking about. And I'm not a, I'm not a teacher on Jesus' level at all, um, but I still teach. And it's encouraging to me to think of Jesus teaching people and them not getting it for a while. Um, but eventually, eventually after a long time, they start, it starts to click. They start to understand and so there's kind of two parts for that for you guys. As, as some of you guys are, are teaching those around you and leading those around you, if they, don't, if they don't get it, it doesn't mean give up. Jesus didn't go find another like 12 disciples after they kept not understanding. But he kept those same ones with him over and over and over again. Through all their dumb questions, through them talking about bread when he's warning them about the Pharisees. So keep teaching. And then at the same time, when you, maybe like me, keep choosing to uh, ignore what God has done for us in the past, what he's done for us in his word that we can see, there's hope for us as well. That at some point, instead of immediately thinking about what's wrong in the, in the temporary and what's right here and right now that we can, that we can grow and be concerned and, and, and think about what God is doing in an, in an eternal sense. What's bigger than just me and my family. What's bigger than just Word of Life Church here, but extends on to e eternity. So, watch out for Pharisees. Uh, be like a disciple. Keep learning. And... God's still God. Amen. Don't be anxious. He'll provide. Let me pray, and uh, the praise team will come up here, and let's, let's worship this God again. God, we thank you for everything you've done for us. In your, in your warnings against false teaching, in the, in the great teaching that you provide, provided your, yourself, 
God, help us to re- rely on you. When we're concerned about what's happening right now, we're concerned about what's happening with our, our physical bodies and what's happening uh, physically around us, whether that be our bank account, whether that be sickness or, or, or death near us, God, you don't change and you're still loving and you're still the provider. Help us to remember. Help us to learn from the, the disciples and their, their willingness to forget um, and change our hearts, change our minds to be more like yours, God. Pray this in your name. Amen. It's interesting in that song, the, and, and I'll do what I ha- whatever I have to. It's been done for you. It's God's love for you that saves you. His, his grace given to you, his faith given to you that saves you. Remember that. If you're going to try and do something, Remember what Jesus has done for you. Receive this benediction from from Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.